When it comes to solar cars, you may think of Light Year Zero, which is the world's first mass-produced solar car designed by the Dutch Light Year Motor Company, and is expected to be mass-produced soon at a price of 1.76 million yuan. Recently, China has also developed a solar car called Tianjin, which attracted great attention once it was released. Different from Light Year Zero, Tianjin is completely driven by pure solar energy, does not use any fossil fuels and external power sources, and achieves zero emissions. Light Year Zero, on the other hand, is solar assisted. The solar module area of Tianjin is about 8.1 square meters, the battery energy ratio is 330 WH kg, and the autonomous driving level reaches L4 level and above. However, the research and development of this pure solar car is very difficult, so what are the difficulties in its R&D? How was it developed? Your vision is your world. Welcome to the developing China, now you are on the journey to look back at every change in the car, witness every surge in speed, and explore the mystery behind the car. Please subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell. Okay, let's get started. Let's first get some information of that solar car. The test data shows that in fine weather, the Tianjin's annual average daily power generation reaches 7.6 degrees, supporting a cruising range of 79.2 kilometers. In fact, Tianjin is not the first case to make a bold attempt on solar vehicles. For a long time, many car companies have been trying to use solar energy to supplement energy. As early as March 2010, the F3DM model that BYD put into the market has a version equipped with roof solar panels. The car is equipped with a new roof solar battery charging system. Not long ago, the world's first mass-produced solar car designed by the Dutch Lightyear Motor Company, Lightyear Zero has started road testing and announced the price. The designer said that if the driving does not exceed 35 km per day and the weather is fine, Lightyear Zero can run for seven months without additional charging. As can be seen from the above examples, in recent years, Concept cars using solar energy as hybrid electric vehicles have been launched one after another, but there is still no precedent for relying on solar energy as the only energy source for the entire vehicle. So what's the difficulty about pure solar cars? This research on Tianjin is to develop an intelligent networked vehicle that is completely driven by solar energy, does not use any fossil fuels and external power sources, truly achieves zero emissions, and leads cutting-edge technologies. Tianjin has many indicators. The cruising range is not less than 50 km, the minimum speed is not less than 50 km per hour, the number of passengers is not less than 3, the automatic driving level reaches the national standard level 4 or above and the maximum conversion efficiency of the solar battery array is more than 30%, and losing more than 50% of the weight of the whole vehicle of similar models. The series of metrics makes the car seem impossible. If 1 kWh travels 10 km, it means that the car needs to be charged at least 5 kWh every day. However, the current high-profile power stations and solar panels have an annual average daily charge of only 4 kWh. At present, the photovoltaic conversion rate of civilian-level solar panels is only 23%, and the difficulty of 30% can be imagined. The normal development cycle of a complete vehicle is 24 months, but this project is only 5 months. In order to solve this series of problems, Sun Fengchun, known as the first person in the field of electric vehicles in China, and six other experts in the field of new energy and new materials gathered in Tianjin, and together with IAT Auto, took over the this difficult task. The first difficulty they encountered was how to break through the 4 square meter limit of solar panels, 
and they had to take into account various needs such as driving safety, internal structure, and unmanned driving. Zhao Jianping, an engineer at IAT Auto, worked overtime late one day. He suddenly saw the a bridge open on TV, the bridge body open from the middle, and then stood up again to form a telescopic structure like wings. He got inspiration from it. When the car is stopped for charging, the stacked solar panels can be stretched out through the design of the wings, thus doubling the area. The improvement of solar panels from 4 square meters to 8 square meters has been achieved, while the power generation must support a cruising range of 50 kilometers, and the photoelectric conversion efficiency of the panels must reach at least 31%. They turned their attention to aerospace solar cells. The solar panels on the Shenzhou 12 manned spacecraft and the Tianhe core module have a photoelectric conversion rate of just 31%. Ultimately, they decided to apply space GAAS solar cell technology to the solar car. But they soon encountered new problems. GAAS solar cell technology performs perfectly in deep space, but when the sunlight passes through the atmosphere and the spectrum is greatly attenuated, the photoelectric conversion rate is only 25%. The ground environment is extremely harsh on the solar panel itself and the photoelectric conversion rate, so the selection of materials is very important. There are hundreds of materials, and they can only test one by one. Each material has to undergo multiple tests such as high and low temperature, rain, sand, and vibration. The final experimental results prove that the GAAS solar cells installed on the test vehicle have stable performance and can still generate electricity even in cloudy conditions. The next challenge is weight loss. Is it possible to reduce the weight of the vehicle by more than 50%? The density of aluminum is 2.7 grams per cubic centimeter, and the density of carbon fiber is 1.8 grams per cubic centimeter. The project team initially considered a carbon fiber skeleton for the entire body. However, due to the cycle, it takes two to three months to manufacture the mold alone. In addition to the time limit, the expensive cost of carbon fiber does not match the project scalability and the original intention. They can only find other ways. This time they sought the help of Tianjin University. The instrument panel tube beams designed by IAT had to be extruded and could not be poured directly. According to the design requirements, there are six metal welding points in the cross-section Tianjin dashboard tube beam. The difficulty of extrusion processing has been increased several times, and higher requirements have been placed on materials. During the test, the extrusion of the profile broke, and the cause of the problem was found. The Tianjin University team adjusted the formula, and the second smelting extrusion was successful. When these problems were solved one by one, a blue and technologically pure solar car Tianjin stood on the proving ground. The test data shows that under fine weather, Tianjin can generate an average daily power generation of 7.6 degrees a year and support a cruising range of 79.2 kilometers. Compared with fuel vehicles, it can reduce carbon emissions by about 25 kilograms per 100 kilometers. Although Tianjin's performance is excellent in all aspects, it is not known whether it can be mass-produced and used in daily life. I look forward to the second generation of Tianjin, and hope that the second can further solve these practical problems. Okay, we just spent another 10 minutes of deep thinking. Do you want to know other auto stories? Please keep following our channel and like our videos. See you.